These are the pictures on Delhi's borders, ladies and gentlemen, and also parts of Punjab. This is what's happening in India's COVID second wave. Things have started getting mildly better, but despite begging and pleading from several different quarters in civil society. The farmers who've been on protest for six months decided not to call off their protest despite COVID fears, despite legal provisions in place banning such gatherings, and despite requests from those who've supported farmer protests in the past. Twelve opposition parties, including the Congress, the Shiv Sena, the Samajwadi Party and others, have supported this protest in the times of COVID. Let's never forget that. But these are the pictures that have been playing out today. In the pandemic, farmers observing a nationwide stir to mark six months of their protest against the Modi government's three farm laws. Protesters are calling it a black day and are hoisting black flags from their homes vehicles and other places as a mark of protest. Take a look. No masks, no distancing, shunning vaccines, and all of this amid the raging second wave of the COVID pandemic. Farmer protesters marked the 26th of May as a black day, six months since they began their protest against the Modi government's farm laws. Maskless protesters with no social distancing took to the streets of three of Delhi's key border points. But the agitation peaked in Ghazipur. As it's been six months of the farmers' agitation here on this day at Delhi's Ghazipur, Prime Minister Modi's effigy is being borne by the farmers. The protest which continues for the last six months here against the farm laws, the farmers yet again have triggered the stare further with the black flag, black turban and now burning effigy of Prime Minister Modi against the farm laws as the farmers gave a call to protest, a nationwide protest which is also supported by almost all the opposition parties. Most of the protesters have so far shunned vaccines, calling the COVID pandemic a government ploy to divert focus. Many of the farmer protesters have been giving bizarre reasons as to why they flout COVID safety norms. Despite the COVID outbreak, the biggest concern is to maintain social distancing following the safety protocols and the COVID appropriate behavior. That indeed seems going to be on toss and perhaps why there are several farmers at various uh, protest points have been infected. But despite all odds, their agitation continues even after six months. Makeshift tents are now permanent shelters having all essentials necessary for survival but throwing COVID precautions to the wind. The tractors and trolleys have turned into a tent city of bamboo huts, but their defiance and their determination is still there. They say that they will not leave till the government agrees to repeal the farm laws. Protests were also witnessed in Punjab, where similar scenes of burning effigies and black flags were seen. Farmers have been demanding complete repeal of three contentious farm laws besides getting a legal status for the MSP. That is why the farmers said they will continue to protest against the three farm laws and the union government as their demands have not met so far. The farmers are refusing to relent and say there has been no communication with the government in recent times. Amit, four months ago, number didn't get a number. If the farmers are spreading, if the disease is spreading, then cancel the law. 
The stir runs the threat of turning into a COVID super spreader event, especially with reports of earlier COVID deaths at protest sites. The protests in the backdrop of the COVID crisis in Delhi and Punjab may also dent India's fight against the virus and the country's preparations ahead of the certain third wave. With Ashutosh Mishra, Anisha Mathur and Manjeet Segal, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, just from a legal perspective, in case you're curious, uh, I mean, it's clear that the farmers are in violation of COVID protocols, but the legal violations of this activity, this big, you know, potential super spreader event, violation number one, there's no social distancing at these protest sites. That's a COVID norm. Violation number two, most protesters are not wearing masks. And, and when you talk to most of those farmers, they say that COVID's not going to be a threat to any of us. Farmers are COVID proof. Violation number three, refusing to get tested for COVID at border points. Violation number four, this is a big crowd at this protest site, despite prohibitory orders, including Section 144 in place. So most protesters have not even been vaccinated. So that's just five violations. I'm sure there are more violations of this kind as well. Joining me live, let me take you straight to the site of these protests. India Today's Kumar Kunal is with me from the Ghazipur border. Manjit Segal is reporting from Chandigarh. Uh, Kunal, what is the current situation? There were big crowds visible earlier today. How is it looking right now? See, right now, the protest has already ended, but uh, the kind of pictures we have sent to you and even our viewers must have seen them, that there are hardly any protocol which has been followed here during the protest today. They were observing Black Day uh, as the mark, uh, as to mark the sixth month of the ongoing protests at these border sites, including Gajipur, Singhu and Tikri. Still, there were several violations and um, the, those violations you have already shown uh, through your graphical presentation that how the, uh, several of the norms have been violated during the pandemic period. Still, the protest is going on, but what these farmers are telling that since the political rallies were going on during elections and there were violations, even political parties are not following. So when these protesters are here for six months, if government is actually serious to end the agitation, they should accept their demands, they should repeal the three farm laws, and if the moment they will repeal the farm laws, mm. they will go to their respective villages. So th this is their, uh, their point. Now violations is there to see. So both the things are happening simultaneously on these borders right now. Manjit, what, what was the situation in uh, Chandigarh and the rest of Punjab today? And also curious to know, what are the days ahead going to look like? Today was, you know, to mark the six months of the agitation uh, in defiance of COVID protocols, norms. Even the chief minister of Punjab had requested farmers not to hold today's uh, black flag protest. What are we going to see in the coming days now? Well, Shiva, as far as the protest is con uh, concerned, protest has come to an end. Uh, hundreds of farmers joined the protest today at various places in Punjab and Haryana and demanded complete repeal of three contentious farm laws. And as far as the days ahead is concerned, the appeals made by the Chief Minister, Captain Amrinder Singh, uh, to the farmer unions have gone unheard. And if you talk about the data, 60% of the COVID-19 cases in Punjab are now being reported from rural areas where the fatalities are three times higher than the urban areas. And the COVID fatality rate is 2.6%, which is highest among all Indian states. The picture is very grim and farmer unions are not ready to relent. They are saying that we will continue to protest till these laws are repealed and as far as the authorities are concerned they say if the farmer unions have a concrete proposal except yes. the demand to repeal the farm laws they can come anytime and government was open for the talks
Manjeet sure. and Kunal, thank you very much for joining me with those details. We'll have to see where things actually go from here. They've already escalated enough. Thank you very much for getting us that update, uh, uh, Kunal and Manjeet. India Today earlier had accessed an exclusive report which revealed that the farmer's stir has created COVID hotspots despite what the farmers are saying. Several Kisan Mahapanchayats and Andolans in Punjab and Haryana led to a huge spike in coronavirus cases, says one report. The second wave is raging and claiming several lives, but the farmers have not called off their strike. Take a look at this report. Two hundred days. That's how long the farmers' protest has been raging on. And despite a deadly COVID second wave, the protesters are in no mood to relent. Now, a report accessed exclusively by India Today reveals that the farmster created COVID hotspots. Kisan Mahapanchayats and Andolans that were held across the states of Punjab and Haryana led to a huge spike in coronavirus cases. Punjab's Bhundar village has been sending a batch of six farmers every week to the capital's borders to protest against the three farm laws. The village has now been declared a containment zone with over 138 farmers found to be COVID positive and six deaths being reported within a week. There are a dozen such villages including Fapre Bhaika, Joga and Logar that have also been declared containment zones. The story is no different in Haryana. A state government report on COVID infections in villages accessed by India today found over 804 deaths in 22 Rotak villages which are located within 100 kilometers from three protest sites. Over 45 villages have been declared containment zones in Haryana. Ten Haryana villages have witnessed over 239 mysterious deaths in two weeks. These villages are located in Hisar, Rohtak, Sonipat, Bhivani and Jhajjar districts. जहाँ तक हमारे जिले की बात है तो हमारे पब्ले एरिया का जो बुराई एरिया है इसमें केसेस बढ़े हैं और बाकी जो हमारा गन्नौर और पोहना का एरिया था इनमें केसेस थे वैक्सीनेशन वहाँ पे स्टार्ट की गई है तो भी 2022 के आसपास वहाँ पे वैक्सीनेशन तो कराई जहाँ कहीं भी मिक्सिंग है वहाँ डेफिनेटली Bharati Kisan Union Chief Joginder Singh Ugrahan himself tested positive in March. Several protesters are symptomatic but are refusing to get tested. Dead body came from Baldiri Singh, Sanam Makhan Singh. Kundli Pharma Agitation site came from the Kundli Pharma Agitation site. The police had requested that he had a COVID-19 test. So he had a rapid antigen test in the body positive. Our 400 people have been killed. All of them have been killed post-mortem. किसी का कोरोना पॉजिटिव नहीं आया और अब सरकार का एक षडयंत्र है सरकार की एक चाल है किसान को बुखार हुआ ही नहीं तो पुलिस क्यों लिख रही है कि इसको बुखार है दो दिन से और जानबूझकर ये लिखने के बाद जहाँ पे उसका मतलब कोविड टेस्ट करवाया जानबूझकर उसका कोविड को पॉजिटिव की रिपोर्ट दी गई सिर्फ आंदोलन को बदनाम करने के लिए Besides the crowds at the Delhi border protest sites, over 15 major Kisan rallies, Mahapanchayats and political rallies also contributed to COVID surge. Protesters and farm union leaders fear that the stir will lose its steam if it's called off. But can it continue at the cost of rising infections and deaths due to coronavirus? With Manjeet Segal, Bureau Report, India Today. And today's protests aren't a one-off. All through the second wave, there have been major farm rallies. Starting from the 16th of May this year, in Hisar and Haryana, 70 farmers and 20 policemen were injured in a clash during the lockdown there. 12th of May, Rupnagar, Punjab, SKM leaders gathered 5,000 farmers for a huge rally that took place there. On the 8th of May, Punjab's 32 farm unions protested against the lockdown itself. 2nd of May, in Ambala, Haryana, Rakesh Tiket addressed a massive rally there. 5th of April, all of it during the second wave, 
in Nadala, Punjab, the Akali Dal held a massive uh, farmers rally. March 21st in Moga, in Punjab, an Aam Aadmi Party Kisan rally was addressed by Arvind Kejriwal. February 21st, Barnala, Punjab, over 2 lakh gathered at the Bharatiya Kisan Union Ekta Ugrahan rally there. February 7th, Kurukshetra Haryana Kisan Mahapanchayat was addressed by Rakesh Tiket. He did so once again in Hisar just a couple of days ago. So these violations have been taking place right through the second wave.